Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to talk about the Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol, which is also called 802.1W. Now, this is an evolution of the 802.1D spanning tree, or the standard spanning tree that we've talked about so far. So it's not a complete overall overhaul, it's just, it's just an evolution. And what we're going to do is talk about some of the new terms that Rapid Spanning Tree introduces and some of the changes in how Rapid Spanning Tree functions. And we'll compare them back to the standard uh, spanning tree so that we can fully grasp the differences and, and the improvements. Now, why did Rapid Spanning Tree come along? Well, even though we improved 802.1D with features like port fast and uplink fast and even backbone fast, there was still a lot of room for improvement because the demands on the network to converge faster and faster just keeps growing and growing. So quite simply, Rapid Spanning Tree reduces the amount of time needed to converge. And that's really the big improvement in this version of Spanning Tree. And just keep in mind, we're going to see how Rapid Spanning Tree does this exactly, and it's not just a matter of changing the timer configs. I know we mentioned in one of the standard Spanning Tree tutorials that you can adjust the max age timer and whatnot. Well, there's a lot more to it than just that. Now, standard Spanning Tree had a convergence time of about 50 seconds total. With Rapid Spanning Tree, we usually get that down to below 10 seconds and usually it can be as good as one or two seconds so it's a drastic improvement. Let's begin by taking a look at what is similar with Rapid Spanning Tree to the original Spanning Tree we've talked about so far. First we still use the concept of the root bridge and we use the same methods to elect the root bridge in Rapid Spanning Tree as we did before. We also still use the concept of the root port on non-root switches and we still use designated ports as well. Also we still use BPDUs, the hello BPDUs, in order to enable all these switches to communicate and share information. Now the next couple topics we cover will all highlight differences between rapid spanning tree and standard spanning tree. The first one is the timers. Now with rapid spanning tree the max age timer is now 6 seconds as, a, as opposed to the 20 seconds with the standard spanning tree. So that's a pretty big improvement. The second change in timers has to deal with the forward delay timers. Now we don't reduce them, in fact we completely get rid of them. So in rapid spanning tree there is no forward delay timer. And if you remember that is 15 seconds and we usually came across it two times, once with the learning state and once with the listening state. So in total, we just shaved off another 30 seconds of convergence time. So combined, you can see already we're making some drastic improvements to Rapid Spanning Tree. Next, let's take a look at the different port states of Spanning Tree. In other words, how a port behaves. In Standard Spanning Tree, we had five. Forwarding, learning, listening, blocking, and disabled. Now in Rapid Spanning Tree, we only have three we keep the forwarding and the learning states however the listening blocking and disabled states of standard spanning tree they all get merged into a single state which is now called the discarding state now a port in the discarding state will not send or receive any frames and it will not learn any MAC addresses however it can receive BPDUs so it's similar in behavior to the blocking state of standard spanning tree as a study tip, keep in mind, whether it's standard spanning tree or rapid spanning tree, the only states that can send and receive frames are the forwarding states. There are also differences in the port roles between standard and rapid spanning tree. Standard spanning tree has the root, designated, and blocked port roles. Rapid spanning tree also has the root and designated roles However, it's taken the blocked role in standard and it's split it up into two different types known as the alternate and the backup. Now the alternate and the backup are still blocking but they do it in a different way and in different scenarios. Let's put this in a diagram to make it clear. Let's start with the alternate port. Now this is the next best root port, an alternate to the root port. 
and it'll be used if the active port fails. So if you remember the uplink fast feature where we identify the next best port in case we need it, well, it's very similar to that. That functionality has been baked into Rapid Spanning Tree. So here, switch C and B are connected, and the designated port is on switch C. So switch B puts that into a blocking state. However, the port role is now known as the alternate port. So should the root port on switch B fail, it will now go ahead and use the alternate port as its new root port. Okay, so very similar to uplink fast. Now the backup port, this is used when a switch has two connections to the same Ethernet segment, which is oftentimes done with a hub. So here we have a hub and switch C has two connections to it. Well, one of those two connections will be, design will be the designated port and the other one will be the backup port. And that'll be in a blocking state as well. However, should the designated port fail, then the backup port can be used to uh, keep connected to that Ethernet segment. Now, something new about Rapid Spanning Tree that didn't really exist with Standard Spanning Tree is how a switch will look at the connection between it and another device. So with Rapid Spanning Tree, it actually cares about what a switch is connected to. So for instance, if two switches are connected uh, via a full duplex Ethernet connection, Rapid Spanning Tree calls that a point-to-point -point link. If a switch is connected to something like a PC, a user on your network, that connection is called an edge connection. Now if a switch is connected to a shared network, like a hub here, it's often called a shared link. And each type of these connections is treated a little bit differently in, in Rapid Spanning Tree, especially when convergence happens. Basically, the point-to-point -point link and the edge connection benefit from Rapid Spanning Tree, whereas the shared connections, the shared link, they don't really benefit from all of the improvements in Rapid Spanning Tree. We don't cover the details of the different physical connections and convergence in this tutorial, but the main thing to walk away from is the different types of connections that Rapid Spanning Tree has. Now that we've covered some of the basics of Rapid Spanning Tree, let's take a look at what happens when a change occurs on the network. Now, in a stable condition, Rapid Spanning Tree is similar to Standard Spanning Tree, except every switch now can generate a Hello BPDU. Remember, in Standard Spanning Tree, only the root bridge would create one, and then everyone else would relay that BPDU. Well, here with Rapid, every switch can create a Hello BPDU and send it to its neighbors. And so when a change occurs on the network, whereas Standard Spanning Tree would just wait for a Hello BBT BPDU to arrive from the root bridge in order to figure out what the new root port should be. Rapid Spanning Tree takes a much more proactive approach to solving the problem. And Rapid Spanning Tree will actually actively contact its neighbor switches and together they figure out what to do. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say a new link is provisioned between switch A and the root bridge. And let's assume that this is now the best path to the root bridge for switch A. It has a lower path cost. Now this is where the proactive approach is really noticeable in Rapid Spanning Tree. The first thing that will happen is switch A will immediately block on all non-edge ports except the one to the root bridge and this is known as the synchronization process. So these links here if they are designated ports would go ahead and they would be shut down. Then switch A and the root bridge they're going to put these ports into a listening state and by using rapid spanning tree they start to negotiate between each other and quite quickly switch A and the root bridge are going to agree to both put these ports into a forwarding state because this is now the best path for switch A to reach the root bridge. And keep in mind, during this time, switch A has prevented any loops from happening because all of its other ports are in a blocking state. Next, now that switch A has its new root port, it's going to go ahead and send out its updated BPDUs because it has a new root path 
to its connected non-root switches, E and B. Now let's take a look at switch B. Switch B and switch A will now repeat the same process that A just went through with the root bridge. So switch B, realizing now that it has a better path, and let's assume this to be true, to the root bridge, is going to put all of its non-edge ports into a blocking state. And then it enters that negotiation phase with switch A. Now, because this is the new best path for switch B, switches A and B agree to put both of their ports into the forwarding state. And switch B now has a new root port to the root bridge. And so this whole process continues. And if we were to look at, let's say, switch B and E now, well, this time, switch E is going to ignore the new BPDUs from switch B. And the reason why is that, let's say switch E already has a direct connection to the root bridge, and let's assume that it's the best path for it to the root bridge. So it will ignore those BPDUs and maintain its root port to switch D. Okay, so at this point, you know, this would cycle through the entire network, switches E, F, and C would all do the same thing, and that would mean that convergence is complete. And under great circumstances, this can take as little as one second to occur. All right, well, you've made it to the end of this tutorial, so congratulations, because we covered a lot of material. So to summarize what we did cover, we now know that rapid spanning tree gives us a much better convergence time compared to standard spanning tree. And along with rapid spanning tree comes some new port states and also some new port roles. Rapid spanning tree also takes a look at the physical connections between switches and end devices. And we also took a look at the actual convergence process itself and saw how each switch can proactively negotiate with its surrounding switches when a change occurs on the network. So we're no longer waiting for everybody to receive a BPDU from the root bridge and then react. Rather, once a change is, is received on the network, every switch can go ahead and actively help to resolve it quickly. Okay, and so that's it. That is Rapid Spanning Tree. Thanks for watching.